Hey folks, this is Jerry in Tucson. Uh, I purchased a Veritas uh, Dell cutting instrument the other day. It looks similar to, or it gives you the same effect as a pencil sharpener would. So what I did was, I want to use it on my lathe. I want to be able to turn dowels pretty long. And I've discovered a couple of things in the process. I've never really explored my chuck. Uh, the problem that I'm having right now is I'm taking the jaws off because they close down to just at a one half inch. That's the size that uh, Veritas recommends for making a 3 8 dowel. And that's just not enough clamping pressure because if you get a catch <clears throat> while this uh, dowel piece is spinning uh, in the jaws or spinning on the lathe, it's going to spin and or stop and just spin in the jaws. And I've discovered that with the jaws taken off of the chuck, I believe I can screw this thing down or close this down to just about zero. I'm going to find out right now. You're a witness to it. I know it'll clamp down well below uh, uh, a half inch. And I think that is about one quarter inch that I see right there. Or maybe eighth inch. Nope, three sixteenths. A little three sixteenths square. And if we're going with... Uh, uh, millimeters between five, uh, four, uh, <laughs> between four and five. <laughs> okay, so anyway, it, it closes down pretty good. So right now, this is not, or what I've done is I've just got that set up. I don't, I'm not putting a piece of wood in here yet until I center my tool. What I ended up doing was making a post that fits my ways. I made it sloppy and I put some set screws in here on both sides so I can center this if this dimension is not centered. On the height, I am centered and I'll show that in a second and I'll even zoom in pretty close where you can see the actual thing. Let's see. I've got a manipulate things here <coughs> okay I'm sh I sure hope I'm not tall because if it's tall there's not too much I can do oh ah yes it's tall damn it's tall by probably a sixteenth of an inch and uh, well, I had that option to take off a little bit more and I didn't do it. It was really difficult for me to determine how all this goes because I didn't have anything that gave me a true center other than the hole. And I'm trying to align it on the, on the post. The post that you see, trying to get that thing aligned. I've got it to where it's vertical. It, it's a good, it's square in here. Now all I need to do is take and the set screws that I have on the sides that will bring me into center and that's why they are there now looks to me like about 30 second out over here I probably should go get my calipers and uh, use that to tell me where my 30 second is because I want it to be as close to uh, not perfect. Perfect does not exist. Not in woodworking. I want it to be as close to accurate as I can get it. Okay, what I've done is I need to screw this one out and this one in. Now that looks, 
as far as I can tell, it looks pretty close to center. Biggest problem is I'm high on the whole jig. Well, that's, it's not lost because what I can do, the way Veritas set this up, we got a couple of bosses right here to sit on the top of this. I could, oh, that's just what I'll do. I'll take this over to my friend's machine shop and machine off a sixteenth of an inch right here. Because I already know what it is. Oops. I already know how far off it is. And it's uh, very close. What I'll do before the day is out, I'll get an accurate dimension on this. But right now, uh, I do have my fix, so I think I'm straight. So now that that's in, we're going to see how this works. I've got a couple pieces of China Berry, or actually I have about six or seven of them. One of them went in, but it had a... Here's, here's what happened with this one right here. It wasn't square to start with. And I was using the jaws, not the chuck, the way it is right now, but I was using the jaws. And uh, it spun. This is a piece of sapwood that broke out. Might even, it's not bark, but it's sapwood and it broke out, so it just stuck. And this is what I ended up with, big giant pencil type thing. So uh, this one here is pretty much junk, unless, yeah, I can do this. These pieces are all the same length, so what I'll do is go ahead and set up. Oops. Let me put this in here. Where's my key? So that's tapered, so that's going to probably pull out maybe if I, if I have to back up. Now, the tailstock is in here for one reason and one reason only, and that's for me to get an idea where my center is. And you can see I'm off quite a bit. So loosen the chuck, bring that up about right there. That's not critical at all. What's critical is, is this thing allows itself to spin, or it does spin. So I'll move my tailstock back, drop this thing in, turn it on, hit on the uh, my banjo here so it wouldn't allow me to go all the way in I can see where this is wanting to come out uh, it, it's moving now uh, I got something caused me to stall coming back and it's more than likely it was a, uh, a piece of super glue maybe a little spot of super glue okay you can see how it just came out. Well, this is what they look like when they're done. Right, nothing special except for what I got going is I need spe species specific wood and that's why I'm making this. The China Berry I just happen to have a whole bunch of or I had one piece and I thought, oh, let's see what I can make. Well hey I made about over a dozen pieces of this wood and I figured that I could use this kind of stuff here, wouldn't really matter. Uh, it works, but it doesn't work uh, absolutely great. So I'm going to go ahead and try it. This one here might clean up as a full dowel, full 3 8 round. And until I get this figured out, then this is going to be a time consuming process for me. I don't even think I'm recording. Am I? Yeah, I'm recording. Hot dog. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to put my earplugs in because that was pretty noisy. And that kind of affected my hearing a little bit. Huh? 
Okay, here we go again. Oh, I'm going to move the banjo. That's what I wanted to do. Okie doke. I wonder why it always does that. Here we go. This is almost 3,000 RPM. I'm going to go to 3. I'm at 3,000 RPM. There's the shavings. They're kind of unique in themselves. <laughs> okay. And I'm, I don't know why I'm making China Berry. Just because I had it. I have nothing specific. What I'm doing is, uh, when I turn my wood, bowls and stuff like that, you get some stuff that's pretty nasty. I'm going to forego the uh, tailstock and just do that because that centers it. But anyway, uh, i got some cracks and things in my bowls that will blow them apart if I do, don't do it right. So I'm using this to uh, seal them, or not seal them, but stabilize them. takes no time at all. It takes longer to set it up uh, into the chuck than it does to actually turn it. You can see how well that one held. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, come on. <laughs> the compression from when I squeeze this in, it uh, squeezes, but when it's working, turning, it, it works itself loose. But since it's a square, it stays in. Nice to get it where it would stay. I can't. Uh, I I do have to compress down on it because if I don't, when I'm uh, trying to cut it, it probably push push it through my chuck. I don't want it doing that, so I got to lock it down. not affecting them at all. I've got some uh, African sumac in there somewhere. Got about 30 pieces. I just decided to cut them up one day last week and turn three or four. Those go crooked real fast. A whole lot more crooked than these things. These, these things stay straight probably until they start drying. Then they'll uh, get all kinds of weird. These dowels are not smooth dowels that you find in the stores. 
I can see tool marks on them, and for my purposes, that's fine. Uh, for somebody that's, I don't know what you use a dowel for, <laughs> other than put a couple of things together, uh, you don't really need anything fancy. I'm going to make up a bunch of mesquite and stuff like that. This dowel is, is a good dowel. Got a little tiny bit of fuzz on it that'll clean off, but very few tool marks. Okay, I don't know how much time has elapsed. I got six, seven dowels that I made in this little bit of time that uh, I uh, was explaining what I was doing. Actually, eight of them because of that one that I started. I'm going to find those Africans and I know where they are. like it might show up pretty good. The African sumac has got a ton of flaws in it and some character, more character than the uh, china berry. So what I'll do here is th these are all the same length. They aren't the same diameter as the last batch. They're a little bit smaller, I believe. But they'll work. Okay, it's in. I want you to see the whole thing. Alright, that'll work right there. <clears throat> okay, 3000 RPM. That's what my Parmatic Lathe does. vibrate on me and that's because uh, like a dummy it's stuff in the darn way it came out of the lathe look at those curlies <laughs> could almost try to do something in marquetry with it <laughs> yeah it's a uh, just a little bit high and that can be taken care of tomorrow. You can probably see that dial. And that's why Okay, it pulled out and uh, I didn't finish turning it, but I don't have to finish turning it because I, there's just so many. I got there. There will be enough. Okay, and that's the roughness that you see on them. That's fine. That doesn't, that doesn't hurt a thing. Now, I don't know what I'm going to do with what I've got. <laughs> There's got to be 30 on there. There's another piece of sumac that uh, it has a crack over here. It's not quite square over here, but it doesn't really matter. I don't think it does from what I've, I'm getting. That's fine. Okay, 
it got real crooked right in there for some reason, but uh, yeah, it took a twist. It looks like a bow. You could probably string it up, shoot a couple arrows out of it. <laughs> okay. And I've got some that have uh, splits and tears and all kinds of stuff on them. And only because I can is why I'm going to do it. Let's see. the ugly stick. <laughs> Whew. Man, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Didn't hurt me, but it could have. I'm going to have to be a little bit more careful. And <laughs> what you're witnessing is the maiden voyage on this. So, I'm learning. because I can. Now every every one has got a twist in it, unfortunately. And that's probably why I'm getting this whip that I'm, I'm getting. If it didn't have it, I would probably be okie dokie, but I'm not. I don't have it and I'm not okie dokie. <laughs> Oops. I could slow it down. Applying a, a, a lot of pressure on the bottom here. I don't know why it didn't want to go. One thing, it could be that uh, 16th inch difference in height caused it to polish up. Boy, did it polish right here. Man, that thing is clean. Oops. That's a good looking dowel there. This stuff, uh, I've been burning my, my chips from my wood turnings, the shavings. This stuff burns really good. Alright, this one looks to me like it's going to probably break. <laughs> and what you're supposed to do when you think something's going to break is discard it. Well, I don't know.
Keep that ugly stick from getting me. I got to keep it in. So, this is uh, kind of fun. Really hard to actually lose one of these. What I'm trying to do is save my knots and things that uh, occur in this. You can't find that on a commercial dowel. Otherwise, I'd be using commercial dowels. This one here, I'm surprised that this section right here stayed together because it's all cracked. But I'll say this, I am learning as I go what I can get away with. This one here, huh, that might not make it. I might stop in the middle because it's really got a big old bend in it. And it's right in through here. It's going to split right there. The wood split right there at the chuck. Okay, there's no reason to save it unless I want it. I absolutely had to have it. I just cut it off or forget about cutting off. Just stick it in the chuck a little bit further. In fact, I will. And I'll see what happens. That should survive. The reason that I built this thing the way I did with that little uh, post holding it up was when I first got this dowel maker jig, uh, I always figured that I would put it in the chuck and use the chuck to, or use the lathe to turn the, jet, turn the dowels. But what I didn't anticipate was the tool getting really hot. And uh, it was actually almost burning my fingers, just holding it. So what I ended up doing was uh, manipulating it some. I, I laid it on my tool rest and, and let it uh, slide along the tool rest, holding it. And I even put gloves on, and I don't like gloves in woodworking. And uh, I decided that something could be done, and this is what I've done. Uh, it's warm. Also set something up to where this will have some rollers or something on the bottom, kind of like a clamp that would keep this thing from uh, uh, bouncing around like it does. And that would be a whole lot better than what I'm, I'm doing, and that's just a safety thing. But uh, now see, this is what happens here is you get a piece of wood that has a crack in it and it wants to break off. It does. And then I've got bark here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to get something out of it. I might not, or maybe I will. We'll see. But I could use something that way. I don't have to get a death grip on this. I 
I need to have my other hand free to hold this. 